everybody and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet this absolutely beautiful yet simple rectangular wrap. Now this wrap is made in one piece. It has a very beautiful simple middle section with nice straight edges on both sides and at the top and bottom we have this lovely floral edge. You can make this wrap as long as you like or as wide as you like. The sizing is completely customizable. So for my particular wrap here on the table, I used two balls of the Jewel Spun Aran with a five millimeter crochet hook. All the details for the sizing, the yarn and the written pattern are all in the description box down below this video. So don't forget to click show more to find that info down there. So the basis of this wrap is foundation double crochet stitches. If you are unsure of how to do the foundation double crochet or you'd like a quick refresher, then watch this video over here which talks you through nice and slowly and clearly. I will show you, however, this yarn is not the best for demonstrating as it's quite light, it's quite hairy and it's variegated. So I will do my best, but as I say, unless you're confident, it might be worth watching that video first. <laughs> So pop a slip knot onto your hook and chain two. These two chains do not count as a stitch. Then yarn over and go into the very first chain you made and pull up a loop. Now because it is a foundation stitch you want to pull up that loop a little bit taller than usual. This is going to form the chain at the bottom and these two loops are going to form the double crochet on top. So yarn over and pull through one loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Then work a double crochet as normal. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So you have your double crochet and your chain worked at the same time. Then go ahead and mark that first stitch. I'll show you again, yarn over. And now this time, go under the little V at the bottom, which would be your chain, to pick up those two loops here and here. Pull up a loop and pull it up a little bit taller than usual. Yarn over, pull through one. And then work your double crochet as normal. So that's two foundation double crochet stitches for my wrap. I did 61 in total. Now the pattern multiple is in foundation stitches. So if you wanted to make it wider or narrower, the pattern multiple is 15 foundation double crochet plus one foundation double crochet stitch at the very end. All that means is you would make 15 of these stitches, 15, 15, 15, until it was the width you wanted it to be, then add one more at the very end. So I'm going to go ahead and make 61 foundation double crochet stitches. Feel free to pause the video and then once you have your 61, meet me back here in just a moment. So that is 61 foundation double crochet stitches. For row two, we're going to chain five, which counts as a double crochet and chain two. Then turn your work. Now ignore this stitch where you just chained from and skip the two after that. So ignore this one, skip, skip, and into the next stitch, place a double crochet. Chain two, skip two stitches, double crochet in the next. 
chain two, skip two, double crochet in the next. You're going to repeat this all the way down the row. Chain two, skip two, double crochet in the next. Again, feel free to pause the video here and meet me when we get to the other end. So I'm approaching the other end of my work now and you'll end with a double crochet in that marked stitch. So you'll be skipping two after you've chained two and end with a double crochet into that marked stitch. And at the end of row two, you should have something that looks like this. Obviously, I cannot get it all in shot. <laughs> For row three, we're going to chain one and turn. Now, single crochet into the top of that double crochet where you just chained from. And then into this chain two space, pop two single crochets. That's one. And that's two. Now chain four. Skip this next chain two space. And we're going to work the first of our flowers into the chain space after. Into this chain space here, we're going to work a treble three together. This is what forms the clusters of the petals. So to do that, we're going to yarn over twice and go into this chain space, skip that one, work into the next, draw up a loop. You will have four loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then stop. With those two loops left on your hook, ignore those, yarn over twice again. Then go back into that same chain two space, draw up a loop, You'll have five loops on your hook this time. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And then stop. Ignore these three loops that are on your hook. Pop them to the end. Yarn over twice. Go back into that same chain two space and pull up a loop. Again, you will have now six loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two and stop. You'll have four loops on your hook and three half completed trebles hanging from the bottom. To complete the treble three together, yarn over and draw through all four loops. That is your treble three together. From this point on, I'm going to call them clusters because treble three together is quite a mouthful. And we're going to be doing a lot of these petal clusters here. So chain five. And work another treble three together cluster into that same chain two space. I'll show you one more time. Yarn over twice. Go into the space, draw up a loop. Four loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two then stop. Yarn over twice, go back into that same chain two space and draw up a loop. You'll have five loops on your hook. Yarn over, and draw through twice. Yarn over twice, go back in and draw up a loop. Six loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And once you have your four loops, and your three half completed stitches hanging below, yarn over and draw through all four loops. That completes your treble three together cluster. Now chain four, 
skip the next chain two space and pop two single crochets into the space afterwards. One, two. Single crochet into the top of that double crochet right next to you. Pop a single crochet in there. And then two single crochets into the next chain two space. Chain four. Skip that chain two space and into the next chain two space. Work a cluster, chain five, cluster. Chain four, skip the next chain two space and work two single crochets into the next. Single crochet into the top of the double crochet stitch and two single crochets into the chain two space after that. This little section here is the bit that you will repeat until the end of your row. So chain four, skip the chain two space, cluster, chain five, cluster, into the next. Chain four, skip the chain two space, two single crochet in the next, single crochet into the double crochet, and two single crochet into that chain two space. Repeat this all across the width of your project. Once you have finished your final cluster and you're running out of space, to end the row, chain four as you have been doing, skip a chain two space and into this final space here, pop two single crochet. And then find the third chain, one, two, three, 
and pop a single crochet into the top of that. So you're ending on three single crochet rather than five as you have in the middle. So you should have this little row of neat clusters with chains and single crochets in between. For row four, chain one and turn. Pop a single crochet into that very first stitch where you just chained from and a single crochet into the next single crochet. So you'll have two single crochets to start this row. Chain five. Now skip this chain four space and we're going to be working into the chain five space in between your clusters from the row below. Into this chain five space, we are going to make a cluster chain five, cluster again into that same space, Chain five, cluster into that exact same space. Chain five. Cluster back into that same space. So this will be cluster number four. You may need to scooch your stitches around for this. So you will have four clusters with chain five spaces in between all worked into the top of your two clusters from the row below cluster chain five cluster chain five cluster chain five cluster chain five we're going to skip the chain four space from the row below and we're going to skip the very first single crochet. You will have five single crochets on the row below. We're going to skip that first one and work into the second, pop in a single crochet. So we've skipped that first one, work a single crochet into the second one, into the third one, and into the fourth of those stitches below. So you will have three single crochets, skipping the first and last single crochets of the row below. Now to continue, chain five, into the chain five space in between your clusters from the row below, you're going to do the same as you did over here, four clusters, with chain five spaces in between.
chain five skip the first single crochet of the ones from the row below pop a single crochet into the next three one two three So you're going to repeat this little section now. So chain five, work four clusters with chain five spaces in between into the top of the cluster from the row below. Chain five and single crochet into the middle three single crochets from the row below. Keep going and I'll meet you over here on this last cluster for how to end the row. Once you've finished your last set of four clusters of the row, chain five, And we're going to end with just two single crochets. So skip that first one and work a single crochet into the last two. That's one and that's two. You should have something that is looking a little bit crushed, but don't worry because once your wrap is finished, you give it a gentle block or just even pulling it like that, it instantly lies a lot neater. So don't be too concerned if at this stage everything is looking a bit crumpled and a bit crushed. So row five is the last row for this floral edge. So chain five and then turn. Skip this first chain five space and we're going to be working into the spaces in between your clusters from the round below. So just like before, we're going to work into these spaces in between the clusters themselves. So into this very first one, we're going to do cluster, chain five, cluster. So we've got just the two in between these first two. Chain five. So into this next chain five space, we're going to place three clusters with chain five spaces in between. So cluster. That's one, chain five, pop a second one into there, chain five. Scooch them around a little bit and pop one more cluster into that same place. So you'll have three clusters 
in this top peak section. Two in this first one. Everything has a chain five space in between. So two clusters with a chain five space in between in this first one. Then you chain five and we're popping three into this top middle section here with chain fives in between. Chain five. And pop two clusters just as we did over here into this next chain five space so cluster chain five cluster Two, three, two. Now chain five. Find your single crochets from the row below. You'll have three of them. One, two, three. Pop a single crochet into the middle. So skip one and pop a single crochet into that middle stitch. So you're going to repeat this all the way along. Chain five, two clusters, three clusters, two clusters, all with chain five spaces in between. Then chain five, single crochet into the middle of those three. This whole little section gets worked over the rows below. So we'll repeat this, in my case, three more times because I have four petals. Chain five, two clusters, three clusters, two clusters, all with chain five spaces in between. Chain five and single crochet into the middle of those three from the row below. As always, feel free to pause this video here, work your way along and then meet me when we get over to here and I can show you how you finish off this row. So I'm just finishing up my final cluster of this row five and I'm going to guess you're pretty glad to be getting past these clusters at this point. So you should have your final cluster row all the way along and you've reached the very end. So what we're going to do is chain five. And then end with a single crochet into that very final stitch of the row. You've got two single crochets from the row below. Go ahead and just pop a single crochet into that very last one. Chain one, grab your scissors and cut your yarn. Now leave a decent length for weaving in. And hang on to this extra yarn because we're going to need that in just a moment. Now pull your loop through that chain, pull it tight, grab a large eye darning needle, thread up your needle, and then weave in this end. That way you do not have to come back to it later on. 
we're going to go ahead. This is exactly how you will finish your work at the other end once we've done the body and when you are working on your second border, and this is your very last stitch of the row. This is exactly how you'd finish off that other end as well. I'm just weaving my tail back up through my stitches so it's nice and secure. You can obviously be a little bit neater than I am being right now. It's coming down through the stitches and disappear off under here. Then for extra security, I like to come back. So skip that first stitch and go over it and then come back under the others. How you weave in your ends is of course your own personal preference. So as you're happy, snip your yarn. And this section is complete. So I have pulled my camera up so you can see how your floral border looks. Now pay attention to where this yarn tail is right from the very beginning of your foundation double crochet stitches. We're going to flip the work upside down for row six. We're flipping it upside down so this now becomes the bottom of your wrap. You want this tail to be on the opposite side to where you join your yarn. So come back over to the other side. So you've got your yarn tail over here. We're going to be joining our yarn over here, but we're joining to the underside of your foundation stitches. So I've zoomed my camera back in. And for row six, we're going to reattach our yarn to the underside of your foundation stitches. So if you pick it up and look, you'll see you've got these lovely little Vs all the way underneath. So you're going to pop your hook under that first V, get your yarn, and draw through a loop. Now chain one. Now to begin row six, we're going to place a single crochet into that exact same stitch where you just chained from. So I'm just popping in a single crochet. For this row, I'm also going to sandwich in this remaining tail. Now pull this tail tight because you don't want it to be seen so that one could be tucked away. And how we're going to keep our edges straight for the wrap is by doing stacked single crochet stitches on the very first stitch. That way it will have a nice straight edge, but will be the same height as a double crochet stitch. So you have your first single crochet already here. Now pop your hook into this outside loop here. Ignore the top of the single crochet and go for this second loop. Just pick up underneath that bar, use your nail if you have to. Draw through a loop and yarn over and pull through two to complete your second single crochet. So now you have two single crochets stacked on top of each other. And if you want to go ahead and mark that stitch, just mark the top Vs of that stitch there. And this is how you will keep nice, beautiful straight edges all the way up the body of your wrap. Then it is a case of simply popping a double crochet into each of these underside chains from your foundation double crochet stitches. So that's just simple double crochets all the way along. You can see I'm sandwiching this tail as I go. I'll sandwich it for a few rows and then leave a bit hanging out, which I will then weave back in the other way. So you want to double crochet all the way across for row six, and you should have, including this stacked stitch at the beginning, 61 stitches in total.
Now my 61st stitch is here. You'll be left with this tiny little chain from the beginning of your foundation double crochet stitches. Don't worry about that one. When you weave that one in, it is completely invisible. So you've attached your yarn on the far side over here for your wrap and crocheted all the way along. Now for the main body of the wrap, we are simply going to be repeating row six. So you're going to turn your work and in this very first stitch, we're going to do a stacked stitch. So pop a single crochet and then pop another single crochet on top of it by going into that vertical bar. And then again, feel free to take out your stitch marker and pop it in. Or if you want to keep an eye on where that stitch is, grab another one and pop it in. Of course, I don't have another one on my table. <laughs> Isn't that typical? So you start with your stacked stitch and then double crochet into every single stitch all the way along. You'll continue this for as long as you want your wrap to be. You will have beautiful straight edges. Now a pro tip, if you are unsure of how much yarn you're going to need to save to do the other border, Grab yourself some scales. So I have some grotty kitchen scales here. Please forgive the fact that they are scuffed and scratched. And what I did when I was doing my wrap originally was I have done the border, the floral border, and essentially two rows of double crochet, if we count that foundation row. So I've got two rows of double crochet and my border. Now, if you just weigh this, fold it up and weigh it. You can see that that's about 24 grams worth of yarn. Now note that down, make a little scribble note, say two rows of double crochet plus the border is 24, 25 grams of yarn. That way you can carry on crocheting, keep going, keep going, keep going. And then with your remaining yarn, every now and again, you can weigh it. And when this big ball, or the second in my case, because I use two, when this second big ball says about 25 grams, I know at that point I have enough yarn to do two more rows of double crochet and then the floral border on the far edge of my wrap. To highlight how effective the weighing your yarn technique is, this is how much yarn I had left from when making my wrap. So it, it can be a bit nervous, you're playing a bit of yarn chicken, but there is science behind it and that is all I had left over. So for if you don't want to waste it, that is a fantastic way to make sure you use every single scrap of yarn, especially when it's an absolutely beautiful, variegated, luxury ball like the jewel spun. So back to the wrap. So you would continue working rows of double crochet for as long as you want your wrap to be. Just keep going, keep going, keep going. My wrap ended up being nearly two meters in length. So you'll have a fair old way to go. So the main body of this wrap is simply double crochet stitches and starting with that stacked single crochets to give you that beautiful straight edge. As you can see on my completed wrap, the edge is lovely and straight all the way up. And this is a fantastic way to just let your variegated yarns sing. No complicated stitches, just rows and rows and rows of double crochet. So once you have done your rows and rows of double crochet stitches, I believe I did approximately 153 or 54, all that is in the written pattern. So I did at least 150 rows of double crochet just back and forth. And then it was time to do the border on the other edge. Now you do not need to cut your yarn and reattach like we have on the start. You simply 
when you stop your double crochets, you return, use the timestamps in this video. You can see along the bottom here is marked row two, three, four, five. You want to return to row two and repeat the steps, rows two, three, four, and five without reattaching the yarn. So just carry on, you get to the very, very last double crochet of your double crochet rows, then chain five, skip two, double crochet, chain two, skip, skip two, double crochet, and just repeat rows two, three, four, and five to end your wrap. So I do hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As I mentioned at the beginning, the written pattern, the information on the different colors of yarns I have used for this video and my wrap, all of that is down in the information box below this video. So don't forget to check that out. And whilst you're down there, if you could give this video a thumbs up, that would be fantastic. So until next time, happy crocheting. Bye.